and then it goes to um, verse 2 or 3 where it says the Spirit of uh, God was hovering over the waters. It says God sent a wind to cover the waters or something like that. Once again, it's focusing on the creation rather than the creator. And the reason why is because the word ruach, which is spirit in the Old Testament, can also be translated as wind. Okay, just so you know that. But from the context, and I don't think anybody would dispout, dispute that the correct translation is the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. But the fact that whoever did the NSR, NRSV said, and God sent a wind over the waters or something, it, it seems like they are trying to diminish the workings of God. Okay, so I'd be careful reading, but at the same time, it's good to read these different versions to see why do people pick these things out and you know, if you just stick to the, the, the New World Translation of the Jehovah's Witnesses, you're going to have bad theology. And that's all they do. This is our Bible. It's the right Bible and everything else is wrong. And that's what they say. Well, unfortunately, they're wrong. But here's, here's an error with their thinking on that. And I'm going to bring it in then we'll get back to this. Is that when they got their first New World Translation, I, 60s or 50s or whenever it was that they, they got the New World Translation, they, the guy gave it to them, to the Watchtower Society, and they reviewed it, and they said, this is a gift from God, right? This is it. This is the translation. Do you know what's happened since then? They've revised it. So God made a mistake on his first gift, okay? So think it through, and I told them that. I said, I, but, you know, right over their head, they just, all of a sudden, it's just like they, 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 something else. That was the day that I was over there. You know, if this was a gift from God, then how, why did it need any change at all? Right? So be careful when you listen to these people. They're already brainwashed, and they're well brainwashed, so they know what they're talking about from their brainwashed sense of whatever. And that's why John says in the book of 2 John, the little book towards the back of the Bible, yeah. do not greet these people. Don't welcome them into their house, lest you share in their wicked work. Why? Because you're going to make a fool of yourself, because they know exactly what they're talking about, and now they feel vindicated in the very fact yeah. that they're wrong. And so don't do it, okay, unless you are completely trained on whatever issue and stick to one issue and talk about that one issue, they're going to start pulling out things and it's like, well, you know, and all of a sudden you're lost and they are vindicated. So the, the, the Bible says don't even welcome in, them into your house. So you're setting yourself up when you do, and I'm saying that with me too. I, it, the Bible says don't do it. I better not do it. I talked to a Jehovah's Witness outside my house one day and I told him why. Just don't welcome you into my house. And he's like, I don't even know if he understood that, but I showed him, lest you share in his wicked work. And I don't know if he made two plus two, but yeah. Well, anyway, I'm letting you know that your work is wicked, and I'm, I'm, I'm explicitly saying that to you, but I don't know if he clued in to that or not, but there you go. Just don't, and you know, I did greet him because he was an old friend of mine, but I wanted him to see the truth, but you got to be careful. When it says greet him, I would assume that that means, you know, you're, you're out with friends, you see him on the road, hey buddy, how are you? All of a sudden you're saying, well, he's okay too. He's not. He is wrong, and now everybody else thinks that what he is teaching is okay, so all right, anyway, I am who I am. I'm not going to get into a long talk about I am as I did before, but just so you know, God does not change. He is eternal. He has no, uh, where, give me two more verses in the Bible that give us the unchanging nature of God. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus is the same. That's Hebrews 13, uh, uh, Jesus Christ the same yesterday. Micah, that's right, where it says, I the Lord, your God, do not change. So those other two verses are all very clear. There is no change in God. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is eternally the same God that was in the Old Testament, and it's Him here, okay? Just because He put on robes of flesh doesn't mean that God changed. He became united with human flesh, but He did not change in His essence, His being, okay? All right. Um, go ahead. I am ascended me to you. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. Okay, now your translation there said, say to the Israelites, whereas this one says to the children of Israel. As I said, you're going to see people diverting 
from the term children of Israel. This is translator's preference, just so you know. Some people will say children of Israel, some people will say the sons of Israel, some people will say whatever. And while you're reading, I'm going to see if in fact the word is Ben, because it's got my curiosity peaked. Is it children of Israel or is it the term Ben Yisrael? And uh, you go ahead and read on. He said, go ahead and tell him that I am, I am has sent me to you. And he repeats that he is the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. This is my name forever, the name by which I am to be remembered from generation to generation. Okay, when he says that this is my name forever, it's just simply saying that I don't change. Okay, he's got a million names in the Bible. I read them all uh, at a, a service not too long ago. And how long did it take? 30 minutes? Yeah. I went through the Bible one time and I took out every name of God in there. Mm -hmm. And I read it as a sermon. And it took at least 30 minutes yeah. just reading one after another. There are, you can't believe how many names there are. But this is, when he says, this is my name forever, this is saying that I do not change. This is my, this is, reflects my very essence of who I am. Okay, go ahead. Go assemble the leaders, go assemble the elders of Israel and say to them, the Lord, the God of your father. I did that, didn't I? I don't know. No, no. Oh. The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, appeared to me and said, I have watched over you and have seen what you have done and see what, and see what has been done to you in Egypt. And I have promised to bring you out of your misery in Egypt into the land of Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Presbytes, Hivites, and Jebusites. Okay. okay, how many are mentioned there? Uh -huh. Read that again. There's um, uh, Hittites, yeah. you got Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, Jebusites. Seven this time. There were six last time. Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Presbytes, Hivites, and Jebusites. Right, so it's going to change from time to time, and you're going to see that. Each time it changes, believe me, it has meaning. I, I don't personally know what it is, but there is a reason why it changes. Now, remember when you just, what did you just say when you started reading that, that first verse? You said, haven't I, you, haven't I, didn't I read this before? When you say that to yourself, when you are reading the Bible and you say, didn't I just read this? That is a very good indication that there is probably a chiasm right here in front of you. And if you start searching, you will be able to make a chiasm. Now, I don't know that. I could go ahead and look this over. But the fact that she said that tells you you are reading something very similar to what you've read before. And that is what you want to do. As you're reading the Bible, if you want to find a chiasm, first you've got to ask the Lord to open it to you because it's His Word. But secondly, you need to pay attention to keys when you're reading. And one of them is, I think I've read this before, when in fact you haven't read it before. It's a new verse, but it's making a chiasm. So my guess is there's probably a chiasm somewhere in Exodus 2, 3, 4, somewhere in that area. Anyway, please go ahead. The elders of Israel will listen to you. Then you and the elders are to go to the king of Egypt and say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has met with us. Let us take a three-day journey into the desert to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. But I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty man compels him. Okay, now hold on right there because I'm starting to get a little far behind you and I, I've probably skipped something that I want to talk about. But I want to get this word to make sure that it is or is not what I'm thinking it is. One, one, two, one. Ben. Ben Yisrael. So when you're seeing here again and again the children of Israel, it's actually the son, sons of Israel. Okay? And that is translator's preference. Instead of saying the son of Israel, they're using the term children. It's, maybe it's more endearing. Maybe it's because it shows that they're innocent and they're, they're being uh, trampled upon. Whatever reason, the people who translate will use different terms. You, in the NIV, don't even have the term son or children. It just simply says, say to the Israelites. They've completely left out the word son. Okay, but the, uh, w the reason why I'm telling you this is because when you read different translations, you're going to get a different mood out of it because of what the translators have decided to do with it. And the more you read the Bible and the more versions you use, or if we're in one class and we have seven different versions, you are going to get a fuller idea of what is going on than if you sit in a class with just the King James Version and that's all you ever use. You are going to be stuck with whatever those people have determined is, it, 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 that's it. So I, that's why I prefer different translations in a class. We can talk about these things. Yes? Uh, just a thought that comes to me. I'm really literal. Okay. So if that said the sons of Israel, right. I would be looking at sons. Right. 
children. Not children. And that could be. Further generations. That's right. I would be saying. Oh, these must be the 12. Be the, yeah, these can't be the sons. That's right. See? Absolutely. See, so somebody else uses conflict. the term children. Yeah. And that's why they've, that they, they've thought sense. that through maybe for your perspective, and then they say just the Israelites, because that includes everybody. It's not just, you know, but that is why it is good to have these different translations yeah. and to, to be able to talk about them. Yeah. But I was sure that the term was Ben, Ben Yisrael, and once again, you know that Ben means son, Benjamin, son of my right hand, Ben uh, whatever. Later in the Bible, the term changes from Ben to what? In the New Testament, somebody is something Timaeus or something Rabbis. Barabbas, Bartimaeus. The, bar. It changes from Ben to Bar. Why? Different language? Different language. It's Aramaic instead of Hebrew. Okay? That gives you a clue that they were probably speaking Aramaic when w w that verse we were talking about a few minutes ago, but I don't want to be dogmatic because, you know, but when you see all of this terminology, if you read the, the book of Mark, it will say, um, I think, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, when he's hanging on the cross. When you look in Matthew, it says, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. He said exactly the same thing. One of them is translating it in Hebrew because he is addressing the Hebrew people. Yeah. The other one... Mark is addressing it in Aramaic because it was the lingua franca of the people at the time in Palestine, or I hate to use the word Palestine, in the land of Israel. But you see, there's no contradiction. He said exactly the same thing, but they are using it, they are translating it for their own benefit. Another thing, you will, may hear, seeing how we're bringing up languages, you may hear somebody, like maybe a Messianic Jew or somebody saying, well, the Bible was originally written in Hebrew and later it was uh, written in Greek, the New Testament. And you may hear somebody say that at some point in the future. That's untrue. How do we know that that is untrue? Tell me if you can think through a reason how you can know that the Bible was written originally in Greek. Anybody? Well, I, we know that it was originally, the, the, the New Testament was originally written in Greek. Not in Hebrew, as some people will claim, because they just, they want to say, well, of course, all of the Bible was written in Hebrew because they're Jewish and they have this pride thing in them, okay? The reason why we know that it was written in Greek is because in John, in Matthew, in Mark, and in Luke, and all four of the Gospels, it will say, and this translated into, from Hebrew, like Gabbatha or Golgotha, and this translated from their own language means the pavement of the stone or the stone pavement or whatever. In other words, what you are reading when it says, in this translated means, that is part of the inspired text of God. Mm -hmm. Nobody inserted those words into there, which means it had to have been written in Greek in order for them to translate it and say, translated this means. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Sure. And all four of the Gospels do this. The fact that the, it says in there, the fact that John wrote, and this translated means, or that Mark wrote, and this translated means, when they say that, they must have been writing in a different language. Exactly. They had to be, because that is part of the inspired text. If it wasn't, it would be inserted later and said, we have inserted this for clarity. Nobody did that. This is part of the original text of God, and therefore the New Testament was certainly written in Greek. Absolutely certainly. Not in Hebrew. What? The Old Testament was written in Hebrew. Now, there is a Greek translation of the Old Testament, but the, it was originally written in Hebrew and Aramaic. Okay, Daniel has quite a bit of Aramaic in it. The book of um, uh, uh, Jeremiah has one sentence that's in Aramaic. Right in the middle of nowhere, it pops into one sentence. The uh, Genesis has one word in Aramaic, okay? Um, the book of Ezra and Nehemiah, they have... Um, Aramaic in it. There is Aramaic in the Old Testament, but it's predominantly in Hebrew. Okay, the Aramaic is because that's what was spoken at the time that that particular passage was written. All right, but anyway, yes, it's in Hebrew, and um, the New Testament was certainly written in Greek. And we've got another minute. We'll go ahead and uh, get one more thing out of the way so that you know. Uh, you may at some point come across a commentary that says Zola Levitt did this. Um, Luke. Um, it was Jewish, okay? I'm, I'm sure that's what I'm, yeah, Luke was Jewish, and Luke and Acts were also written by Jews, okay? Now, that's not true, but once again, personal pride steps in. Well, of course, the whole Bible was written by Jews, and why would God pick the majority of the New Testament, which 
Luke and Acts together really makes up the most of the New Testament, size-wise. Why would he have a Gentile write that and everything else be written by Jews? 